Happy Wednesday to you. Thank you so much for joining us right here on the Oatana Today Show. I am Shelley Whitehead, your host. I'm excited about today's show because we're going to be talking about the United Way. Questions you might have, what are they? You've seen the posters and stuff, but we're going to be talking about that, so stay with us. But we're always looking for new ideas. If you've got something that you've got going on in your community that you'd like to see right here on Charter Channel 8, six days a week, you can do that by sending us an email at oatanatoday at charter.net. You can also call us at 390-5751, and Leanne will be glad to talk to you about what you've got going on because this is a community program. We want to know what's going on in our community and the people who are watching want to know. So make sure you let us know what's going on. And as I said, you can find us six days a week right here on Charter Channel 8. And if for some reason you're busy out enjoying this lovely fall weather, you can always find us on the internet. We are on YouTube as well as Facebook. And Leanne does upload the most recent episode right to your news feed. It's an easy way. You can also find us at the thethirdhandproduction.com. That's Leanne's uh, website. And she does have the most recent as well as archived shows. So if you'd like to check that out, you can do that as well. So stay with us. If you've wondered about the United Way or want to know how you can give or why you should give, stick with us. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Dr. Beth Giltvet. And I'm Dr. Nick Vincelli of Horizon Eye Care. We want you to see what you love and love how you see. We're proud sponsors of the Owatonna Today Show. I needed more than just another dead-end job. I wanted a career, so I expressed myself. With the kids off to college, I decided it was time for me to go back to work and express myself. Express got me in touch with some really great companies. Now, I'm on my way to a great career. Express Employment Professionals is in contact with thousands of companies in need of quality employees. Come in now and get the job you deserve. Express yourself today. Hi, I'm Pete Grant, Superintendent of Owatonna Public Schools. We know that the financial stability of a family depends on good education. The United Way programs and initiatives prepare children to come to kindergarten ready to learn and offers mentorships and tutoring through the early school years. We're proud to be part of this United Way Community Campaign Leadership Team and encourage you to give generously this year. Our children are counting on us and we're counting on you. And we are back with the Owatonna Today Show. We're here to talk to three people who know a lot about the United Way. Or a little bit about a lot. I don't know. A lot about a little? <laughs> we don't know. We'll a lot it. about a lot. A lot. Ooh, I like there that. You go. <laughs> so we're going to start off by having you guys introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you and your connection to the United Way. So we're going to start with you, Annette. My name's Annette Frank, and I am currently serving as the United Way Board President. Okay. And I'm Tanya Paley, and um, my current role is um, I am Director of Strategic Operations, which is our new part of United Way's work. Mm -hmm. um, I also am the co-chair of the Women's Leadership Council for United Way, and I've served for the last couple of years as the chair of the panel that looks at um, grants for children and youth. Okay, good. And Shelley, I'm Dave Ramsey, and I've been on the board about five years now and uh, served on the advisory uh, a committee and work on the audit committee at the uh, United Way. Well, very busy p people, all of us. And so I kind of want to talk a little bit, we'll start with you, Dave, if you don't mind. I'd like to talk a little bit about why you've decided to give your time and energy to a, a very comprehensive program. This is, not, this is not a minimal time commitment for you. Why have you decided to be a part of this? The United Way has been an important part of the community in Steele County for years. And uh, I've been uh, giving for years, and I thought I'd get involved in the board. Uh, I enjoy learning about the organizations that we support and I believe the organization uses the community dollars really well and I think it's a great way for people to give and to give back here in town. And I, I guess we, one of the conversations we want to have today is that the community dollars well and um, we've talked a little bit off air about uh, the thing, the, the responsibility that United Way has to the community, to those people who give. And I, if we don't mind, let's, uh, should we start with you, Annette? Talk a little bit about um, what that process is. Uh, what does it mean to be responsible, fiscally responsible with the United Way? 
Um, what that means is that whenever we do have a request come in from an organization, we want to make sure that any community dollars that we put towards that organization are used to their fullest capabilities. And so um, we, we really look at service versus cost of service versus other, other alternatives available out there. Um, just a, a systems approach to, okay, here's a gap that's been identified by this agency and are they doing everything they can to fill that gap um, in a responsible manner? Mm -hmm. Because it's not our money that we're spending. Mm -hmm. We're spending the community's money and so we want to make sure that um, it's going towards things in the community that are going to um, help strengthen our communities. Mm -hmm. I imagine that there's also kind of a social responsibility as well as a fiscal, making mm -hmm. sure that those organizations are uh, meeting needs in a moral, you know, in a legal <laughs> way as well. Absolutely. Um, how, did this, how does this work with, a, kind of walk me through that process. Somebody, like you said, somebody comes mm -hmm. to you mm -hmm. and then what are, they, what are the process that they have to go through to become a part of the United Way? Okay, um, we first start off with they need to request a partnership with the United Way um, before we'll even invite them to write a grant. And so they will send us a formal request in writing, um, including their 501c3 status because they must be a 501c3 in order for us to consider them. Then we take it to our Community Investments Board, look at the program, determine, okay, is this a non-duplicated program um, within the community, does it uh, fall within our areas of service, our focus areas, and um, whether we feel that uh, the organization would um, truly benefit the, the gaps that they're stating that they, they would um, benefit. Mm -hmm. And so from there, then if we approve them at community investments, then we will invite them to, to write a grant. And so then there's that whole entire process <laughs> there. Um, they write a grant. We have our, our community investments process is where we have panels of not only board members, but we bring in the community as well to sit in on these panels um, to truly dig into the program and make sure that um, everything that the, the agency is bringing to the table is truly um, you know, I don't want to say justified, but just that, that this is a need within the community, mm -hmm. that they're showing that it's a need based off of the number of clients that they're serving and how they're utilizing the dollars that they're asking for. Um, and so that goes through the whole panel interview. Um, and then from there, there's like three, four, or five <laughs> approvals after that. Um, because again, we want to make sure that the community's dollars are spent mm -hmm. the way that the community would want them to be spent. If you were mm -hmm. to guess, and I know I'm sure this is different for every agency, but how long does that process take? Um, it's actually the same uh, length of time because we, we have the, um, the letters go out for the grant request. Those are due at a certain okay. time, you know. And so um, usually the whole grant interview process is about a three-week okay. time frame. Um, and then final decisions are made within like two, so two it months. So pretty fast yes. then. So when the, yeah. if there's an agency that needs money now, it's something that they can do pretty quickly. Well, it, they have to first of all be a partner agency. Yes. Right. And then as long as they get in on our grant site, then um, but the funding goes for the following year okay. so our grant reviews that we'll be doing this coming spring mm -hmm. will be for 2016 funding okay mm -hmm. well I want to talk to Tanya next because you have been a part of a program that was funded by the United Way the um, the, the Steel safe and drug free. Yeah, safe is that what you're thinking, thinking of? yeah yes. you know uh, you know and now you're a part of a, a new branch mm -hmm. and so you're kind of working on a whole new process of working within the community and I think I imagine that there's going to be new programs as well as, as evaluation of the old ones. How have you seen that process work for some of the things that you've worked with? Sure well um, you know one of the things that's exciting about what United Way is doing right now is that in addition to the campaign money that we're um, raising we're actually bringing in outside money Right. So the Safe and Drug-Free Coalition was, when I was the project coordinator for that, that was completely funded through a grant mm -hmm. from um, the federal government. Mm -hmm. And so um, that money came into the United Way. Some of it went towards, you know, some of our fixed expenses for the United Way. So it actually helped to reduce the overhead, the amount mm -hmm. that, you know, we would have to spend just to be up and running. So it actually made our campaign even more efficient. Mm -hmm. Um, but um, and then the the work that I'm doing right now, Shelley, is um, it's very exciting, and um, I know we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But in terms of the funding for it, mm -hmm. it's coming again from outside money. It's yes. coming from the Bremer Foundation and the Bush Foundation. Mm -hmm. um, they saw what we were doing at the United Way, and they thought that that was something they really wanted to put some dollars mm -hmm. behind. And um, and so we are able to do 
so much more now as a United Way as a result of getting that, that outside money as well as the public support. And what that finds fascinating to me is that because you have a tradition of asking other organizations to do this process, United Way also does that process. That's right. When they go to ask other grants. So, so not only are they holding the people they're supporting accountable, there's people who support you who are holding you accountable, making sure you're doing the same thing. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And United Way Worldwide also holds mm -hmm. us accountable, oh, and I, see. I know that we actually do didn't we go through a process where we got certified as a, one of the top United Ways in the country for our size? Every year. Yeah. Yes, every year we have to go through this very lengthy process <laughs> and, and we scored the top of the charts. Wow. So that's, that's a, a plus for our yeah. community here. Well, and so Dave, going to the business side of this, so when people bring their money and they, they want to give back because this is a great community and they are always giving, um, what are some of the, the things that people need to remember when they do give to the United Way, some of the benefits that would be given to them should they give to the company? Well, it's, it's a great organization. There's a lot of great organizations that ask for money in this community. And uh, the United Way is a way to aggregate dollars and, and for us to really take a close look at it. Uh, the community advisory board that picks the different organizations each year really does a great job of scrutinizing the dollars, uh, the programs that are out there, and making sure the programs do what they say they're going to do. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, well, it's a short process in two or three weeks, there's a lot of preparation ahead of that. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of back and forth between the board and these organizations because we really want to make sure we understand what they're doing and how they're doing mm -hmm. it. And I'm guessing that the advisory board is made up of people who actually know what they're doing. <laughs> I know that sounds well, silly, but I mean, like they have a, a real good uh, understanding of the fiscal side of it and the legal side of it, that kind of thing. We've got a good mix of people. Yeah. Some mm -hmm. little more financial background, some people that are involved in other organizations in the community. Mm -hmm. We try and get a good mix so that we take a holistic approach to trying mm -hmm. to figure out which programs serve the community best. Because I would be willing to help, but you don't want me helping in accounting. Let me just tell you that right now. <laughs> that would be a bad thing. Well, we're going to take a quick break, but we're going to come back and we're going to talk about this year's fundraising, what we've been doing so far, um, how we're going to continue to work towards that, and again, talk a little bit about more about some of the reasons you should give. So just stick with us. We'll be right back. Hang on. Hi, I'm Rick Smith, golf course superintendent of the Brooktree Golf Course. Brooktree is an 18-hole championship golf course featuring well-manicured greens, tees, and fairways. We are open to the public. I challenge you to find a better maintained golf course for the money we charge here at Brooktree. Come on out and play Brooktree, a great golf course. Everyone deserves opportunities to have a good life, a quality education that leads to a stable job, enough income to support a family through retirement, and good health. But the reality is many children fall behind, many families are struggling, and many others are in poor health. United Way's goal is to find long-term solutions. Thanks to a grant from the Otto Bremer Foundation, we're hosting community conversations this year to address these issues. If you'd like to join us, please call our office. Hi, I'm Brenda with the Mortgage Office of Brenda Bednar, aligned with American Mortgage and Equity Consultants, where closings feel right, right from the beginning. I'm a proud supporter of the Oatana Today Show. Hi, I am Dr. Amy Swain from Amy Swain Hearing Centers, and for more than 20 years I have been helping people hear better. It has been a very rewarding experience, but so many people put off getting help with their hearing. Clients often tell me they wish they had started wearing hearing aids sooner as their quality of life was improved so much with better hearing. Call me today at 1-800-804-3361 for a free hearing test at Amy Swain Hearing Centers of Oatana, Austin, and Wasika. That's 1-800-804-3361, where Dr. Amy Swain wants everyone to hear better. Hello, I'm Sean McNulty. And I'm Deb Gillard with Brookdale Senior Living, Sterling House, and Claire Bridge of Owatonna. And we are a proud sponsor of the Owatonna Today Show.
And we're back with the Oatana Today Show. So uh, we had a chance to kind of really talk about the process of what it takes to be a part of the United Way. And I think that's important when you're giving to somewhere. Uh, I know there's sometimes you can buy pink gloves and it's given to a certain organization. Mm -hmm. And you hope that it, some of that money, and you really don't know where that money's going mm -hmm. to, but you want to support that. And that's the great thing about the United Way is that not only do you know where it's going, but you can actually ask for reports and say, where did these dollars mm -hmm. go? So that's great. Mm -hmm. But exactly. what I want to talk to you now is about the current We've got another season. We have a couple, you know, um, we had an election, elective season going up, and now we have the campaign to raise money. Exactly. So let's talk a little bit about that. Start with you, Annette. Uh, tell, we've got to kind of take a new approach this year. Absolutely. We're, we're very excited um, about our ca corporate campaign leaders um, this year. Traditionally, as you know, we've had one corporate campaign leader every year, and they have done a phenomenal job. Mm -hmm. Um, Jocelyn's again set the bar last year when they came on board, very creative um, in their approach. Um, this year we approached the male health systems and said, hey, we'd love it for you to be our corporate campaign leader because it definitely fits in with our strategic plan and our overall view. And they're like, okay, we'll consider it, but let's talk to a few other people because we think we can make this even better. And so they approached the Steele County Public Health and then the Owatonna School District and both said, hey, heck yeah, let's do this <laughs> together. And it's just been a phenomenal collaboration between the organizations. And I think, again, they're going to set the bar this year for our corporate campaign leaders and our, our campaign. So we're really excited about that. And mm -hmm. that seems to be a word that, that kind of is, is the theme of the United Way collaboration, mm -hmm. working with, among, and that kind of thing. So as we look at this this campaign, mm -hmm. uh, how can we collaborate with those people who are our donors, our viewers, mm -hmm. and make sure that they can get the process, get the money that they want to, if they want to give, how can we make that possible for them? Um, if they want to give, there's a number of different ways that they can give. If they are a part of an organization, most of our, our companies are having campaigns within the organizations. However, there's a number of people who aren't you know, in, in a corporation, or maybe it's a very small business that isn't having a campaign. Um, you can call the United Way office at 455-1190, and they um, can definitely take a donation over the phone. They can mail out a donation envelope. Um, you can do it on our website. There's just a number of ways for you to give um, and always just pick up the phone and give us a call and, and whatever's going to work best for you we're going to try to help right exactly mm -hmm. because you want to make again a collaboration between exactly. you and the giver as mm -hmm. well absolutely and then yeah. another collaboration is that tanya we can you continually growing united ways yeah. and just like oh no we got enough people we're done <laughs> you know you're always growing us so you want to talk about a couple more initiatives that you've yeah got so you know um the United Way has always had different components of what they're supporting, but we're being more intentional now mm -hmm. about being not just reactive to not just providing that social safety net that mm -hmm. you know the food shelf provides or that um, some of our agencies that work with families in need mm -hmm. provide, but we're also being proactive. We're looking at how can we make this community a place where people don't need to go to the food shelf right. anymore exactly. and they don't need some of those services mm -hmm. anymore because we know we need to, um, you know, we need to be efficient just like any mm -hmm. business and think strategically. So there are a couple of things that I, I would highlight that we're doing right now and then some other things coming down mm -hmm. the road. But right now, one of the things, so we have three components to our strategic plan. One is income, mm -hmm. one is education, and the third is health. Mm -hmm. And you see that in the corporate campaign right. leadership <laughs> yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, and so for income, we're doing something really new and exciting, which is what, during our community assessment, when we talked to folks, one of the things they identified was that sometimes they were um, offered a job or there was a job open mm -hmm. to them, but they didn't have the money to buy the steel-toed boots that right. they needed to mm -hmm. take that position in, sure. our, in our manufacturing. And so, you know, you think about something really small like that that mm -hmm. could make a huge difference for a family. Maybe they don't need to go to the food shelf anymore once their family member right. gets those boots and goes to work. And so that Boots to Work program, that's what we're calling it, huge. Um, has mm -hmm. been very successful. We've put over 100 people to work with our Boots to Work program. Mm -hmm. um, and really, again, this is about not charity, but opportunity for Absolutely. a family. Um, the second program that we're doing right now that has been really exciting as well is our Dolly Parton Imagination Library. And mm -hmm. so while the Boots to Work was about income, this is about education, and mm -hmm. it's really about making sure that all of our kids come to kindergarten ready to learn and ready to read um, because we know how important that is. Absolutely. And so we actually have, we're, we're closing in on 500 people, Shelley, 500 kids mm -hmm. that we've signed up from age exactly. birth to age five 
that are getting books once a month in their home, and they're going to get to kindergarten ready to go. <laughs> so um, we're really excited about that. And um, I did want to say, if, if you're listening and you know somebody in that age range of birth mm -hmm. to age five, mm -hmm. Um, we have this Dolly Parton Imagination Library. Um, there's a form. You can pick it up at the public library. You can pick it up at agencies around town, um, certainly at the United Way, mm -hmm. and also online if you have online access. Fill out the registration form. It's completely free mm -hmm. um, because we are supporting that through um, partnerships, collaborations <laughs> in our community mm -hmm. with Rotary and the Found Public Library Foundation mm -hmm. as well as United Way. So. Those are just two examples of how, you know, this the Stally Parton Library may take a few years to make a difference, mm -hmm. but it's going to make a difference in our community. Great. The boots to work, that's making a difference right now. Immediately. Yeah. Absolutely. And so, and I, you know, one of the things I'm thinking about this program is even though, you know, if the parents are too busy to read those books, the kids are actually having access. They're holding them, they're looking at them. Mm -hmm. But yep. a big brother or a big sister yeah, can actually absolutely. having that access. Because we do have a library yep. that, that is great and amazing, but to have those in the home when at bedtime, you don't mm -hmm. have to try worry about returning it, yes. mm -hmm. can make a huge difference. Well, it's fun too. The book. <laughs> arrives at home for the kids mm -hmm. yeah. and it's theirs uh, it's their it's book theirs, they get to yeah. keep it mm -hmm. um, you know we take that for granted sometimes yeah. that you've got access to books and reading mm -hmm. the kids get this it's exciting to get something yeah. in the mail that works well and uh, they're they're great books and the mm -hmm. kids are going to learn if they mm -hmm. are excited about reading and the better prepared we can bring kids mm -hmm. into the the world the better they're going to perform which leads me to, to why we need to give. You know, we talked about the benefits of giving, you know, because you are an organization that is 501c3, so there are tax benefits for that. But Correct. Those are, what are some of the other reasons that well, you I want to I uh, think the biggest thing is United Way uses the dollars so well. We scrutinize so many different organizations that uh, are giving back to the community, and we make sure that they're performing. And mm -hmm. if they don't perform, we move on to another organization. We try and make sure... We're not duplicating any services, mm -hmm. and we want to use everybody's dollars uh, as wisely as we can in the community, and we make that a point. Mm -hmm. uh, when people do give to the United Way, what is that process of, of tax deduction, that kind of thing? How does that work for them? Well, simply, it, it's a tax-deductible expense, and just like any other charitable organization, you work with your accounting people, uh, you get a deduction depending upon your tax situation. Mm -hmm. It works very well. Yep. Um, so one of the questions I have is I know some people, there are some organizations they don't want to support, and there are some they do. Why give to the United Way when you, I know you can allocate to your dollars, dollars saying, mm -hmm. I, this wants to, I want this to go to Big Brothers and Big Sisters. Why do that instead of just giving it straight to Big Brothers and Big Sisters? What's I think difference? one of the big advantages of the United Way is we've got such a strong community of people that take mm -hmm. a look at the programs that are out there. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes I'm familiar with one or two programs, and I can support some of those individually. Mm -hmm. But the United Way, my dollars go to the organization to help handle all of those. Mm -hmm. And a lot of good people that I don't see, don't know. And I think that's what makes a difference in Owatonna mm -hmm. and throughout Steele County. And like, well, and as Tanya was saying earlier, you know, by giving to United Way, you can support those people, but then they can do more. United Way itself goes exactly. out, gets their own grants to provide exactly. those kind of programs that yeah. maybe an organization, seeing a hole, filling that kind of thing. Well, and so really giving that a dollar to United Way is like giving $5. Yeah. And because we have so many partnerships within the community, we're able to make that dollar go farther. Okay. Um, and so that's why it's really important. Yes, if you want to give to an organization independently, we all do. All of us give to not only United Way, but to individual organizations. But just know that when you do give to United Way, your dollar is going much farther than if you're giving it direct. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are in the middle of the campaign. Um, mm -hmm. Do you know how many companies usually work with this? Do you have any idea of how many uh, companies are part of the corporate giving? Pretty much all of them. There's only a, a handful that aren't. Okay. I mean, the Owatonna in Solisio County is very supportive of the campaign. Okay. So. And then uh, how do you work with, because I know we are with the school, school district, what is the school district doing to kind of encourage the kids in their schools to get, be a part of the United Way process? We are waiting to hear how that goes <laughs> for them. So we'll have to bring Mr. Tom Sager on to talk a little bit more about what he's implementing in the school system. But I'm sure it will be something very creative. They're very good about that. Thank you for your time today. <coughs> I'm so choked up. <laughs> but I do appreciate your time. And, and I know it's a lot of time that you're giving right now, so we thank you for that. Enjoy your day, enjoy the campaign, and we'll have you back to see how things go. Thanks, Thanks for having me, Shelly. We'll be right back. Please stay with us. 
Hi, I'm Ron Clancher with Clancher and Sun Landscaping and Concrete. We support the Oatana Today Show and so should you. Hello, my name is Katie Marshall. A year ago my family and I became homeless. We were scared and alone. Today, with the help of Steele County Transitional Housing and generous donors like you, my family and I are safely housed. I am working, going to college, paying my rent on time. My children have a warm bed to sleep in every night. My family and I are so grateful for this second chance. Please help others in need by donating to Transitional Housing today. Everyone deserves a safe place to live. And it's time for a quick look at your community service announcements. The Steele County Historical Society will host an educational meeting for their volunteers, members, and guests on Tuesday, October 14th from 1 to 6, the Lang Theater of Owatonna. This was yesterday. I'm going to move on. Thank you. Was that yesterday? Yes. That was yesterday. It was, yes. Well, well, this is today. The Friends of the Owatonna Arts Center will host the luncheon at, uh, today. The speaker will be, oh, Hob Hobibo Haji the author of Conquering the Odds, Journey of a Shepherd Girl. The lunch will be served at noon with the program at one. Tickets are $25 and can be purchased at the Art Center or at Cockies. They're creepy and they're cookie, kooky, mysterious and spooky. Come join the Riverbend Nature Center naturalists to learn about scary creatures just in time for Halloween. The animal world is full of predators and nightmarish creepy crawlies, but there are a few frightening creatures that don't deserve such fearsome reputations. Come meet and learn about snakes, spiders, lizards, and salamanders. You might be surprised what some of these scary creatures can make cuddly, worthy companions. You'll be able to watch the animals eat and maybe even touch them as much as you'd like. Event is October 16th from 5 to 6. The cost is $5 or $3 for Riverbend members. Pre-registration is desired if you'd like more information. Call 507-332-7151. We'd like to invite you to join the Steele County Historical Society for their fall trip on Wednesday, October 22nd, as they venture south to enjoy some fall color in southeastern Minnesota's Bluff County. They'll begin their day with a tour of the Fillmore County Histor Historical Society's Fountain. Lunch will be at the Four Daughters Winery, where they'll have a specially prepared lunch and tour of the winery, some time to purchase wine to take home as well. Their final stop will be in the Spring Valley Historical Society at Laura Ingle Wilder's official site. The cost is $60 per person and includes transportation. All meals, uh, all fees, gratuities, as well as a snack. They'll leave at 8.30 and return by 5. Space is limited, so please call your res make sure you call and get a reservation at 451-1420 and ask for Laura. Firefighter of the Year is uh, happening now at the, with the Oatana Exchange Club, and congratulations to Todd Ulrich for being that Firefighter of the Year. They'd like to invite you to the Firefighter of the Year Banquet, which is happening Thursday, October 23rd at the Eagles Club. $20 is the ticket price, and the city uh, you can get tickets at the City Administration Office, Kaki Jewelers, or the Oatana Fire Department. If you'd like more information about this, you can call 507 451 for 287. Special speaker will be Kathy Osmussen's Minnesota State Fire Marshal Division Juvenile Fire Setting Intervention Program. And the program will be Kids and Fire What You Need to Know. Thanks so much for joining us right here on the Owatonna Today Show. We are coming back on Friday. We do want to let you know that we were a little bit uh, off kilter last week because we did have a family emergency with our with our group here. So that's why we weren't here. last week's programming was a little off, but we'll be back on Friday. And we're going to be talking about Shock Red Ribbon Week as well as Amy Swain and her hearing center. So we'll see you then. Have a great day.